Hey everybody, welcome to Braveheart Interviews. I am sitting here with the amazing and fantastic Lou Hexter. And Lou is a Braveheart uh, retreat participant from uh, 2016. And really excited to be chatting with you today, Lou. Um, yeah. I'll let you do a, a, a quick introduction of yourself and let all the guys out there know who you are. Sure, great. Um... Yeah, I'm uh, Lou Hexter, 56 years old, 56 years young, um, an urban planner living in the Bay Area of California, beautiful, most beautiful place uh, on this side of the earth. And um, I'm a gay dad. I have a partner and two sons, two sons, 11 and 13. Um, very full family life, uh, very challenging, full professional life. Um, yeah, I, life is full. <laughs> it's full. And yet there's always room for more. There's always room, right? That's always right. Room. Nice. Say yes. <laughs> Keep saying yes. Um, and and Lou, Lou's an inspiring guy, like being a family man and, and still creating and being of service to the world. And um, and you're such a, such a, a fun... Um, you just brought so much fun and joy and warmth to the retreat. Uh, it was really cool to have that, that energy there. Yeah. Um, and so, so as far as, uh, one, one thing I always talk about guys is how they're being of service to the planet and, uh, or like being of service to, to like your mission on, on earth. And I know that you're, you've got some, a project you're working on, but I, I'm, I'd love you to share how you're being of service in your work and in your, uh, your passion project. Great, great. Um, I'll take work first for 400, Alex. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, so I mentioned I'm an urban planner. I've been doing this for about 30 years. And um, what I love about my job is it gives me an opportunity to work in communities to uh, engage people in conversations about so often controversial projects that are coming on, <clears throat> you know, building uh, extensions to railway systems or, or transit systems or uh, creating a new park in the community or building buildings. And, and where we get involved is in engaging a community in conversations about what they'd like to see in this project, et cetera, what, you know, what concerns they have. And then our job is to try and integrate community values into the technical aspects of a project. So, to hopefully achieve a balance between what's technically most desirable and also what the community really wants to see. Um, so I, I've enjoyed facilitating a lot of conversations, uh, sometimes acrimonious conversations, um, but my big hit is when we can get people in a room who feel diametrically opposed to something mm -hmm. and facilitate a way towards common ground. And um, that gives me the juice to keep on coming to work every day. Nice. Um, yeah. So, um, so I love that. And then my passion project, um, well, coming into the Braveheart retreat in April, um, I had this notion, I had this calling that I wanted to assemble people together to really look at, um, holistic health. How are we showing up in the world? Um, you know, fully healthy, um, with healthy habits and healthy, um, attitudes and, um, healthy practices. Um, and, uh, you know, mind, body, spirit, um, relationships, et cetera. So um, Braveheart really cemented that notion for me that I'm really interested in how people um, take care of themselves and not just on a static way, but really um, dynamic way. How do, you, how do people grow? How do people change? How do people manage all of that and really stay connected to their true self and also um, enable that gift to show up for other people as well? Mm. Um, so that's what I'm involved in now is assembling um, a retreat experience. And uh, I'm working with one of the other Brave Hearts from April um, as a co-producer. Um, and that connection and, and collaboration has been just fantastic. Really, really wonderful. And I, I've loved the opportunity to um, work together and learn from each other. And um, I think the sum of this is going to be greater than certainly I could have conceived of on my own. So we're gonna be producing this men's retreat in November, um, about a, a month after the Braveheart 
Bermuda retreat in October. So uh, nice, full speed ahead. Yeah, and it was it was so cool to to see this come out of come out of the retreat because we want more more men helping men. It's it's great. Um, and and one of the unique things about about your partnership, I think, is really cool. Maybe you could speak to uh, is is the uh, the age difference or the uh, mm-hmm. de- decade difference. I don't know what you would call it, anyways. A lot of decades different, yeah. Difference. Yeah, um, but one of the things that that we're big on in Braveheart is is inclusion and having people of of different um, races and um, locations and cultures and sexual preferences and and ages come together and and help each other grow. Yeah. So I'm curious to to hear from you about that experience with with your your partner there. Yeah. Um, thanks for the question. Um, I, yeah, I, I prefer to call it stage of life difference. <laughs> um, but um, yes, uh, your spirit so, is the same, right? <laughs> exactly. Spirit is the exactly. Same. exactly. You know. Um, anyway, so yeah, we we found out early on that um, that because of this difference in uh, stage of life that uh, we had some different ideas about how to proceed. And I discovered that I was rather conservative and kind of tentative and, you know, um, my comfort zone was a certain space and um, my partner Jeff's space is a little bit um, larger. Uh, And um, I I don't know if optimistic is the right word, but um, possibilities and, yeah, you know, just say yes. And so we found ourselves in, the, in this great dynamic where um, he'd be saying yes, yes, yes. And I'd be saying, but, but, but. And then um, I, I feel certainly that I've been brought along um, really nicely to his point of view. And I've, you know, I've been able to point out some of the things that I see uh, based on my experience. And uh, he said, and he's heard that. And we just found this really great common ground um, common way of working together and uh, so yeah there's there's definitely that um he has a very um strong identification with um also a a perspective on men associating and i have my own perspective so we're we're exploring those differences as well and uh i think the result as i said before is a is a really stronger concept and a stronger product if you will or a stronger experience based on the fact that we are not exactly alike and uh, we definitely have our own strengths and uh yeah it's been really great yeah and and so that thanks for that point right there like being different like the ideas come together and and if you can like stay together and and they mesh and and grow this beautiful thing occurs um and so i'm curious with for for uh, the, the guys out there going on the retreat, right? It's this very diverse group of, of guys. And we had every, every uh, stage of life covered from 20 to 70, right? Yeah. Like yeah. that. Looking at it right up. Um, we had all those stages covered and everyone was different. What did you, what did you notice as far as your interaction with different guys was concerned and like um, how the retreat might have shifted your perception of others or who you work with or your overall experience of men? Right. Um, well, that's a pretty broad question. I, I think I can take it in two, two ways. Perfect. One is um, the, uh, the younger guys for me, I, I didn't really know exactly what the composition of the group was going to be, but obviously open to, to whatever. And what I was most inspired by and, and affected by in the group was, as you know, one of the older, on the older end of the spectrum, um, I really appreciated the energy uh, of the younger guys, um, just at the, so many of them at the beginning of their professional lives and, uh, you know, in some cases, family or relationship lives, and just the energy that I saw of, you know, as I mentioned before, just possibility and potential and, um, wanting to make a big statement, um, step forcefully and powerfully into the world. 
and it made me check in to, you know, where am I? What is, what is my stage of life? Well, I've had a successful professional career. I, I'm, I'm in sort of the middle of raising, raising kids. And so my, my work right now is creating the next chapter of my life. Maybe not the ultimate and end chapter, but it's, it's getting up there. So, you know, I'm really, I felt really stimulated by the younger guys, their energy and enthusiasm and their zest for possibilities. And, and that really influenced me. At the same time, um, I saw the older folks um, lending kind of this historical viewpoint of like those of us who have had careers, perhaps we were inspiring to the younger folks, you know, that, that it is possible to, to have a satisfying you know, career. And there are even older people have dreams unfulfilled. And so um, maybe that was inspiring for younger folks to see older folks who, you know, have achieved something, but are also wanting to, to find something more to do. Yeah. Um, and then the second thing that I, I don't know if this is part of your questions, but, you know, I, I want to reference the mixture of uh, gay men and straight men. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know what the percentage was, but, and I, again, I didn't know what the composition was going to be coming in, but just open to whatever, but definitely as, as the retreat unfolded, what manifested for me was this really deep appreciation for the space created for connecting across gender or, or, or sexual orientations. And I felt a strong, I, one of the most surprising and meaningful things that I got out of Braveheart Retreat was this connection with straight men and be feeling seen and heard and acknowledged and embraced. And uh, that was extremely powerful, really. And I hadn't gone in expecting that was, or looking for that, but, but that was a beautiful result. Mm. And what, what made that powerful for you? Um, it, it made me realize that for a good bit of my adult life, I've been basically running away from straight men because I'm afraid that they have a judgment about me and my choices or my, the way that I live and love. And um, I just haven't confronted or had an opportunity to really be vulnerable and be in a place where they were vulnerable too. So that was magical for me um, and really uh, started a healing process for me around, you know, my own shame and, you know, how I, how I look at myself. You know, I think I internalized a lot of the messages that I heard growing up that being gay was not okay and you were less than. And what I heard at the, you know, from the straight men at the retreat was, you know, tell us what your experience is as a gay man and you share that with us and, you know, you know, we love you. So it was awesome. That was really good. Nice. It's beautiful. Yeah. It's, um, there were two, two things I was thinking. So one as as an older man, that's willing to, um, grow and explore more. Like I, I want to acknowledge you for that, for the courage it takes to, to be in that space and to learn from everyone, like no matter the age, I think that's, that's, one of the, the best leadership qualities actually for a leader is being able to learn from anyone and, and not seeing yourself as superior or whatever. Um, so I think that was a quality that, that everyone there had, which was really unbelievable. And then, uh, you know, the conversation around gay and, and straight men coming together, I think is one that continues to be one that, that, um, is eye opening to every man that, that comes. And it's, it's beautiful to, to hear the love that's there. Right. And just know it's there. It's just, it's there. Mm -hmm. um, so thanks for that. Uh, so, so you're, so you're starting a, a retreat for men, spiritual retreat. Um, and so I'm curious how you, you noticed or, or if you notice Braveheart uh, supporting your spiritual growth. Hmm. Wow. Um, <laughs> yeah, you know, for me right now, everything is a spiritual experience. So um, <laughs> uh, to separate that out. So I think the whole Braveheart thing for me was 
I, I processed it through this um, spirit. And um, I want to commend the, the, the leaders, the keepers at Braveheart um, for creating such a beautiful space for, to allow, for me at least, the spirit to really um, thrive and to be invited in to inform our discussions, our conversations, our visioning, our, you know, all of that. So, um, so I, th I think following up on Braveheart Retreat, I made a, a strong, I felt a strong calling and, a, and made a strong commitment to increasing my meditation, specifically my meditation practice. Um, and um, so it's, it's made a real difference for me just in terms of starting my day with that time to check in and be present for whatever comes across and to allow space for my heart to breathe. Um, mm. And it's been really interesting to experience how just breathing deeply and, and focusing on maximizing or optimizing my oxygen intake kind of carries over to uh, trying to optimize everything that goes on for me during the day. I'm trying to, take in as much and breathe out as much as I possibly can. And it's said, you know, that we use about 10% of our brain, um, that we had all this unused capacity. And what came to me in meditation was, you know, well, I think we breathe uh, typically, I, I breathe very shallowly during the day. I don't bring, I don't avail myself of all the oxygen that's available to me. Um, you know, and so I feel like also I, I looked then at, at my heart, how much is my heart open? How much am I exercising the, you know, the gift of, of love and connection with other people? And I realized, you know, my capacity for love and connection is much greater than what I'm currently utilizing. So I guess this is a long answer to your question about spirituality, but, um, but it, as you can see, it's really opened up a whole lot of things for me. And I, I just want to say that my husband the other day, after I finished a meditation session, I came in to have a very, meaningful conversation with him and just apparently this has made an impression on him. He just reflected back to me that he said, I, I seem a lot calmer and more mm -hmm. centered and more grounded. And I, I don't lose my temper as much. And um, so anyway, it was just nice to get some feedback about how this spiritual practice is really affecting others around me as well. Beautiful. Do you hear that guys? Spiritual practices help marriages. Yes, they do. I'm here to tell you. I'm here to tell you. If there is a problem with a marriage, maybe <laughs> check into that. Just an idea. The next step is to get us to meditate together. Ah. That's the next invitation. I like it. Well, I'm standing for that. There you okay. go. I got that possibility. Um, cool, cool, cool. So th thanks for sharing all that and, and the wisdom that's inherent in what you shared. Um, the next, next thing I got for you is, uh, what do you think, or what do you believe it means to be a brave heart? Um, um, well, focus, I think there's no, uh, it's, it's not a coincidence the the name, I think, uh, okay. what's required is to have some courage to open up and, uh, I mean, that's really all. It is to show up, have courage to be willing to learn, to be willing to hear new things and to um, yeah, invite people into, you know, a, a very concentrated, intensive, but exciting um, and vulnerable space. And um, I think going into Braveheart, my, my goal was to show up really open in that space mm. uh, to let this experience happen for me and not to come in with so many preconceived ideas about what I needed to get, right, et cetera. So um, what, is, what does it mean to be a brave heart man? Somebody that can show up um, you know, vulnerably, authentically, ready to participate, ready to give, ready to receive. And, uh, and that open heart is, is really uh, important. Beautiful. Beautiful. Um, and then uh, the, the last, well, two, two last questions. So one is what's the best advice that you have for other men out there? Yeah. Um, 
just take a chance, give yourself um, an opportunity to grow. Uh, and I think everybody has places that they, they can grow. Um, even if you're successful in business or successful in your relationship, um, you know, I think it's really challenging to balance all of the aspects and all of the demands of our lives and all of the potentials that we have. How do we, how do we manifest all of that successfully? And by success, I just mean, you know, aligned with our purpose and aligned with our spirit. And so things like this Braveheart retreat is a great opportunity to explore that, to expand it. Um, so wherever you are, I think you have an opportunity to grow and to change and to, and doing it in the company and the community of other men is really supportive and inspiring. And so that's what I would say, do it, do it. <laughs> where, where, got that. All right. And, and then the final question is, um, how can other other people support you and what you're up to in the world. Like, is there a website for the retreat yet or um, one that you know of or? Yeah. Um, well, thank you for asking that. And we're thick in um, website development mode. And uh, this is an area, a new area for me. So I'm growing into this and learning an awful lot. So the short answer is uh, the website is coming. <laughs> uh, I think very soon. Um, I would encourage, you know, I, I've been really enjoyed the We Are Brave Hearts uh, Facebook page. Mm -hmm. I love staying connected and feel really supported through that venue and mm -hmm. avenue. Um, and if, uh, yeah, so stay tuned. I think we'll be announcing our website coming through there. Great. Um, yeah, that's, that's pretty much what I would say. Okay. And I invite anybody that heard something in this interview that wants to know more about my experience with Braveheart. I'm, I'm definitely open to talking one-on-one -on -one with people. Awesome. So great. Thank you so much, Lou. Um, <clears throat> it's been a pleasure to, to talk and thanks for your wisdom and sharing everything. Um, so cool to have your perspective on, on masculinity and Braveheart. You bet. All right. <laughs>